The story you're about to hear is a compilation of documented true facts about historical characters, events, or locations. Please sit back and listen as I narrate this story to you. This is part one of two presentation of possible Jack the Ripper suspects, and there may be other suspects that have not been included in this presentation. In the late 1800s, several women were brutally murdered in London's Whitechapel district. The murders were thought to have been committed by the same person, dubbed Jack the Ripper. Jack the Ripper, as named in a letter written by someone claiming to be the killer, made headlines around the world, but we know very little about him. He was never identified, but a sketch was created to aid in the manhunt. Marianne Nichols, Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride, Catherine Eddowes, and Mary Jane Kelly are the canonical five. Five women who were murdered in a 10-week period in 1888, according to historians. However, there are theories of the Bois veracity that Jack the Ripper was responsible for dozens of murders, not just in London. The killings remain unsolved to this day and are unlikely to be solved definitively because much of the evidence and case files were destroyed during the German bombing of England during World War II. There are numerous theories as to who the murderer was. After interviewing over 2,000 people, investigating 300, and detaining 80 more, London police were still perplexed as to the identity or identities behind all these heinous murders. During their investigations, however, police narrowed the suspects down to several people, though none were formally charged. There were numerous theories as to who Jack the Ripper was. Here are a few of the possible candidates. Walter Sickert in her book, Portrait of a Killer, Jack the Ripper, Case Closed, author Patricia Cornwell identified artist Walter Richard Sickert as the true Jack the Ripper, claiming to have discovered DNA evidence linking Sickert to at least one of Jack the Ripper's letters. But, even before her book, Sickert was suspected of being involved in the Whitechapel murders since the 1970s. Sickert was born in Munich in 1860 and moved to London with his family in 1869. Sickert was well known for painting prostitutes and some believe he used to incorporate clues and symbols from Jack the Ripper murders into his work. According to some experts, the clues are so like the actual crime scenes that they could only have been painted by the true murderer. It is also believed that Sickert was impotent after undergoing several penis surgeries. Experts have long speculated that Jack the Ripper may have suffered from impotence, which explains why he targeted prostitutes with such ferocity. Cornwell also discovered mitochondrial DNA on several letters written by Jack the Ripper, which matched several letters written by Sickert. However, it was not enough to persuade experts that Sickert was responsible for Jack the Ripper murders in London. Unfortunately, Sickert died in 1942, taking his many secrets with him. Thomas Hayne Cutbush Thomas Hayne Cutbush was undeclared insane and committed to Broadmoor until 1891 just a few years after the Ripper stopped. That is the most serious flaw in the theory that he was the Ripper, but no one was arguing he was sane, according to the Independent. That became even more true after Broadmoor released his medical records in 2008. The 26 documents told an odd story. Born in 1864, he lived a perfectly normal life until 1888 when he began to go insane for unknown reasons. It was linked to heredity and overstudy at that time. He spent hours hunched over medical textbooks and he wasn't the only family member to be labeled insane. His uncle, who was also a Metropolitan Police Superintendent, shot himself in front of his daughter. Cutbush was said to go missing on a regular basis, only to return home covered in mud and on occasion, blood. His aunt claimed he was violent on occasion, which he demonstrated in 1903 by attempting to bite his mother during a visit to Broadmoor. He threatened people with knives and suffered from paranoid delusions. At one point, he thought his foot had been tainted and that doctors and his legal counsel were plotting to kill him. Contemporary media dubbed him as the Ripper, claiming without evidence that the police department was covering up the crime because Cutbush was the nephew of one of their own. That would have been humiliating. Francis Tumblety Francis Tumblety was a con artist, huckster, and potential serial killer from the United States. Tumblety, like many others at the end of the 19th century, 
was profiting from false medical products based on secret knowledge obtained from American Indians. This was a common practice at that time, but Tumble Tea was particularly skilled at it. Tumble Tea traveled throughout the United States and Europe selling medicines, elixirs, and herbs that he claimed could cure a wide range of ailments. He made a lot of money and gained a lot of notoriety because of his business. Tumble Tea was not only linked to the Jack the Ripper murders. He had been detained and questioned as a possible accomplice to Abraham Lincoln's assassination. The infamous doctor was also prone to delusions, frequently writing self-promotional pamphlets about himself and making up wild stories about how he was accepted by royalty and famous authors all over the world for his medical expertise. Instead, in Donald Rombolo's book, The Complete Jack the Ripper, fully revised and updated, he was credibly placed as living in a rundown section of Whitechapel. Tumble T was also a well-known misogynist who despised prostitutes. Tumble T had a collection of uteruses in jars, which he said he kept for study, but assured everyone who asked that they came from every class of woman, Rumbelow writes in his book. Many people believe Francis Tumble T was Jack the Ripper because of his money, ability to travel, and hatred for prostitutes and women, as well as accounts of him being insane and possibly having lived in Whitechapel for a time. William Henry Burry William Henry Burry was the Dubois distinction of being not only a Jack the Ripper suspect, but also the last person executed in Dundee, Scotland. He was hanged on April 24, 1889, and while he had the usual list of not-so-redeeming qualities, such as a tendency to drink excessively and beat his wife, he was also in Whitechapel at the right time and clearly despised all women equally. Burry and his long-suffering wife left London in January 1888, not long after the Ripper murder ceased. They had only been in Dundee for a few days when he strangled his wife and sliced open her stomach, according to Executed Today. With no way to get rid of her body, he made the strangest statement ever. He told police she'd committed suicide and that he hid the body for a few days so no one would think he was Jack the Ripper. It's a very specific excuse and it completely failed. There was no evidence linking him to the Jack the Ripper killings, but there were some things that looked suspicious. One was his ill-fated wife's habit of referring to him as Jack the Ripper, but perhaps she was just acknowledging how evil he was. His executioner thought he was Jack the Ripper, and some Scotland Yard detectives agreed. One thing is certain. Burry took his secrets to the gallows with him. Mary Piercy only one female suspect has been identified as Jack the Ripper, and she was executed on December 23, 1890. The evidence that she was the infamous Jill the Ripper is flimsy, but Ripper or not, Mary Piercy had a taste for murder. It ran in her family, according to the old police cells museum, as her father was executed for murder when she was 14 years old. She dated several men on and off, but her true love was a furniture removalist named Frank Samuel Hogg. Unfortunately for her, Hogg was married and a father, so Piercy took care of some business. Mrs. Hogg's body was discovered first, with her skull fractured and her throat nearly severed. Phoebe, their 18-month-old daughter, was discovered the next day. She had been strangled. As in customary, suspicion fell first on the husband. Once Piercy was on the radar, it wasn't long before they discovered bloodstains, rugs, kitchen knives, and a poker in her kitchen. She insisted to authorities searching her home that she had only been killing mice. Strangely, she also played the piano and whistled while they were searching, but no one believed her. She had been pretending to be Mrs. Hogg's friend for a while until jealousy got the best of her and an afternoon tea turned deadly. Was she merely a jealous lover or was she something more? Robert Mann the true identity of Jack the Ripper, according to author May Tro via The Scotsman, was Robert Mann. Tro re-examined key players and evidence through a more modern lens, re-examining some of the basic beliefs about the Ripper. That he was lower class, that he probably had a troubled childhood, and that he worked as a medical assistant or in another profession that allowed him to be around flesh and blood but didn't involve social interaction with people. He discovered that Robert Mann ticked all the horrible boxes and then some. Mann worked as a mortuary attendant in a Whitechapel workhouse. It's all about location, 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 as the saying goes. 
and man was in the right place to work in the mortuary where Ripper victim Polly Nichols was sent. He even had access to her body and undressed her despite being told not to touch her. He was summoned to testify as a police witness, but the coroner noted that he was prone to fits and neither his memory nor statements are reliable. Joe believes man fits the description and was in a unique position to admire his work even after the bodies were discovered. Once he was deemed untrustworthy and denounced in court, the law forgot about him even as a suspect. Aaron Kosminski Several high-ranking police officers suspected that the Polish barber, Aaron Kosminski, was responsible for the Jack the Ripper murders in London. At Liverpool John Moores University, DNA from Catherine Eddowes' shawl was tested. They claimed to have found DNA that matched Eddowes and another sample that matched one of Kosminski's descendants, but the shawl is no smoking gun. There is no chain of custody and according to The Independent, the DNA profile contained an error that rendered the entire investigation inconclusive. Kosminski was born in Russia between 1864 and 1865 and moved to London in the early 1880s. Kosminski was Jewish and he was a hairdresser in Whitechapel at the time of the Jack the Ripper murders. He apparently had a strong dislike for women, homicidal tendencies, and was even committed to the asylum in 1889. Aaron Kosminski allegedly threatened female members of his family with a knife and was committed to a mental institution for this violent behavior. There were no other violent incidents that could be linked to Kosminski, but he did live near the canonical five murder sites at the time of the murders. According to the asylum records, Kosminski was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. This, combined with his proximity to the prime Jack the Ripper murder victims and his history of brandishing knives at females, makes him a prime suspect. Rumors circulated at that time that the killing was a Jewish ritual sacrifice, and despite issuing an official statement denying this, Scotland Yard believed Kosminski was at least a viable suspect. Documents from the time of the Jack the Ripper murders revealed that authorities suspected a man named Kosminski, though Aaron Kosminski was not identified as the suspect until many years later. All of them could have been in Whitechapel at the time of the murders, and all of them have psychological characteristics that point to them being killers. Over the years, dozens of people have been identified as Jack the Ripper, and no one can agree on who they are. The world will most likely never know who murdered the canonical five women over a century ago. Hey everyone! I just wanted to express how grateful I am that you took time out of your day to listen to my narration. This is Nikki of Twisted Mind, and I'd like to wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Salamat.